Hello everyone, um, I am Hui Zhu from Penn State University. I'm glad to have a chance to present here to share my work when social inference meets item inference. In the beginning of this talk, I would like to briefly introduce social inference and item inference. Social inference refers to inference between friends as people tend to trust friends' suggestions rather than opinions from non-friend users or advertisements in online social media. The social inference really exists in online social networks. Um, as a study proposed in Nature 2012 shows that people tend to be affected by our friends' behavior to make this, his decisions. Social inference may also help to sell in products. For example, it is a coupon from Living Social. Uh, in this coupon, uh, every user can share this coupon on his on his um, Facebook or Twitter account, and after three of his friends click the account uh, and buy the product, then the original user will obtain the product for free. This kind of coupon somehow validates that the existence of social influence, and it may also affect users' decisions. And what, in contrary, what is item influence? Item inference display the relationship between items. For example, in Amazon, we'll show the list of recommended items based on user's purchase of browsing, based on his purchase history, and some other website will present this kind of list based on his browsing history. This association rule can, op can be obtained by algorithms in association rule mining or frequent item set mining. Um, both social inference and item inference are really material work in data mining area. However, we argue that previous works on social inference only focused on social inference propagation for a single product. In contrast, a previous work on item inference only focused on the relationship for a single user. But in real world, Social inference and item inference will both play a role in affect users' behaviors. For example, uh, in the above figure, if Alice first bought the DVD, and he made his social inference may influence his friends, Bob and David, to buy the DVD too. And after David watched the DVD, he may be motivated to buy the original novel of the, the DVD and in recommend this item to his friend Cindy. None of previous work cannot capture the social influence and item influence in the same time. So in our work, we, tend, we propose to um, a social item graph to capture these two effects at the same time. In the social item graph, the node is no longer a user is a user by the item. And the age among the nodes describes the relationship among these nodes. For example, on the left hand side, there's a, a hyper age from Alice Spice novel, Alice by CD to Alice by DVD with probability 0.8. And the right hand, on the right hand side, there's another hyper age, Alice by CD, Bob by CD, to CD by CD with probability 0 0.5. As you can see, the, the left hand side hyper age is from item inference. The left on the right hand side is from social inference. However, we, our model does not retrace the node uh, to, to the age to be across uh, the same user or the same item. So our model can be generalized to describe um, the more complex complex relationship among social inference and item inference. And here, I would like to uh, describe how, how, how the inference is diffused on, in SIG. It generally is very similar with a previous independent cascade model. Initially, only the seed is activated. Uh, for FH, if all its those nodes is activated, uh, 
then it will be have a single chance to activate the decision node with the probability label on the hyperedge. For example, uh, there, is, there is a simple, simple graph. Um, in the beginning, only Alice and Novel, Alice by Novel, Alice by CD are the thief. So in the first iteration, on the left hand, on the left hand side edge, we'll have a chance to activate Bob to buy the mob novel with probability 0 0.3. And on the right hand side, the hyper edge will have 0 0.8 probability to motivate Alice to buy DVD. And if these two events happen, uh, it may have a chance to activate Bob by CD. Note that if both the event happens, um, the probability will be one minus the probability that both events cannot motivate Bob to buy CD. With the, with the SIG, there is two challenges for us. The first is the new spread maximization problem. In, in other words, how to select suitable seeds in SIG to maximize the number of inference nodes. Another problem is the statistic inference problem. In other words, how we obtain those those weights in the C graph. For the first challenge, we propose social item maximization problem. The social item maximization problem given a SIG is to select cases such that the number of inference nodes is maximized. Note that even though we formulate on weighted one, this one can be extended to a weighted version to address the situation that different products may have different profits. We now we're discussing the difficulty of SIM problem. First, SIM is NP hard. It may, it's similar to obtain a traditional social inference maximization is NP hard without the existing of social inference. Oh, sorry, hyper age. Second, SIM is non submodule. We provide a counter example here uh, to show that it, since it is not submodular, we cannot obtain a one point one mile over E approximation ratio to for the same problem. So how hard simple it is. We try to raise a example to show that like simple is really hard. Here the algorithm we consider the algorithm of single node greedy selection. Uh, the single node greedy is to greedily select a node in each reach each iteration with the largest increment of spread as a seed until the cases is select. However, with this kind of with this kind of strategy, we can find that on the left hand side, the U1 to UK, if we only select one of them, it cannot motivate any node. So the, the single node greedy will always select nodes from the right hand side, U1 prone to UK prone. However, the best solution for this should be selecting U1 to UK as it may motivate large amount of nodes. So when the, case, when the case is when the N is really large and the epsilon is really slow, uh, the approximation ratio here will be at least about N over K, approximate to N of K, and in the best in the worst case, it may approximate to big O N. Here is how, uh, how we formally prove that the same problem is really cannot be obtained any approximation algorithm with ratio better than n. We, we prove it from a gap introducing reduction from three SAT problem. Generally, uh, we transform any expression in three SAT problem to a simple prob problem instance. And we prove that if the expression is satisfiable, you, the spread in the corresponding seek will be as large as the number. And if it is not satisfiable, the spread must be smaller than this number. And with this the gap introducing reduction, we can prove that there is the approximation ratio is in approximately will be like this. And by choosing the parameter from uh, suitably, we could prove that there is no N, N to the power of E minus epsilon approximation algorithm for any epsilon larger than zero. In other words, it is impossible to find an algorithm with approximation ratio better than N. So 
here we try to greedily sol solve the problem theme. We propose hyper age aware, aware greedy strategy. Um, recall that the single node greedy algorithm per performed purely, so we may want to select multiple nodes. But if we consider multiple nodes, there are many, many combinations, co approximately uh, two to the power of number of nodes. So we, we want to strike a balance between the performance and the time. So here we try to only consider the source combination. The source combination includes all source nodes of a hyperage. For example, in the, few, in the example we just used, uh, the source combination will include U1 to UK as it is the source node of a hyperage. However, U1 and UK is not a source combination as there is no hyperage with source node only U1 and UK. U, uh, similarly, UK and U1 prime are also not a source combination. We try different combination and select the one we will increase the, the most incremental of spread and select it until cases are select. Another issue, sorry, another issue that we, we need to address is that the simulation process may take a long time to calculate the spread. Previous, previous social inference in maximization work will have some model to approximate the spread, but with the existence of hyperage, um, it may hard to be developed such kind of model. So how we, how we calculate the spread is to use the um, simulation uh, Monte Carlo methods. So here we propose SIG index to store the hyper age probability suitably for accelerate the diffusion process. For each destination node, we'll have SIG index like this. There is an example. We collect all nodes ending in V5 and we store it in a FP tree like this. Um, precisely, for example, we store F the average from V1, V2 to V5 in, the, in this node. And we store the probability uh, average from V2, V3, V4 to V5 uh, in this node. And how we obtain this kind of index in the beginning? Uh, generally, we use the FP tree algorithm to generate the FP tree by considering the source combination of each average as a transaction. While uh, during the diffusion process, we, when some nodes are activated, we dynamically update the index to retrieve the probability that we need to consider now. For example, consider that V1 is, V2 is activated. So we need to check all nodes with level V2 um, in SIG index. We are labeling in the yellow nodes. For each yellow node, we check it's all its child and link it to its parent. And for if the, there is a, an age on the node, uh, we will forward it to its parent. For example, if v, there is a hyper age V1, V2 with probability 0 0.4, after V2 is activated, we all, we, all, we all only need additional V1 to be activated to be used. So it should be stored in the V1 after V2 is activated. Another challenge for us is how to select, uh, how to learn the age uh, in SIG. We use a ENS algorithm, which is a variant of EN algorithm to learn it. The S refers to smoothing, and the equation is shown in the following. For experiments, we conduct experiments on three real data states. The first one is from Douban, it's a China website for sharing books and music. And the second one is from Guara. The third one is from Epinius. The number of nodes you uh, age items is shown on the slides. We first evaluate how well we construct the SIG graph. Uh, we compare our performance SIG with two baselines, general threshold hole, which is proposed in ICDN 2011, and variance regularized EN algorithm for, uh, in ASNA 14. As we can show, as shown in the 
as shown in the slides, we, our model generally outperforms other two baselines in predicting whether a product will be bored or not. For inference maximization parts, we compare our proposed greedy algorithm, HAG, with four baselines, random, which random selects and the single node greedy approach, SNS, which selects a node with largest increment of spread in an iteration. And the third one, social approach, and, and the first one, item approach, consider only uh, social inference age and item inference age while selecting the seeds. To better understand the performance of HAG, we perform our experiment first on a small sample subgraph from Doban. And we can, as we can see, HAG generally outperforms <coughs> other approach and approximate the performance of optimal solution with much less running time in this small subgraph. We also conduct experiments in a larger graph, but we cannot able to obtain the optimal solution for such larger graph. So here we, all, we can see a similar trend that HAG performs um, better than other baseline approach, we, but it, the running time is higher since you need to explain mu much more combinations. We also compare to evaluate the efficiency of SIG index. We also compare the performance of SIG index with two baselines. The Monte Carlo baseline does not uh, do anything on storing the index. The sorting one will uh, store the, the age with higher inference probability first. And the SIG index is our proposed approach. As, as, we can show, as we can see, the performance of SIG index is much better than others, showing that SIG index can really accelerate the diffusion process. Finally, we conclude our paper. Uh, first, we are observing that even though both uh, social inference and item inference are well investigated in our previous works, uh, Few previous few of them consider them jointly to better capture users' behavior. Here, to address this issue, we propose SIG model to capture both social inference and item inference in the form of hyperage. We propose a new inference maximization problem SIMP in the graph model SIG. We also develop a statistical inference based framework to learn the weight from the data and experiments validate the effectiveness and efficiency of our proposed methods. And thanks. Questions, both microphones. Uh, so while people think about questions, I have a question for you. Uh, it's a high-level question. Uh, you mentioned that there's no method that combines social influence and item inference, uh, and you're approaching it from a very graph-based uh, graph approach. However, there's other approaches we will see later in the session. For example, you can model it in collaborative filtering, uh, add a regularization term for social influence. Uh, do you have a sense of how this approach would compare to those other ways of uh, adding social influence? Um, I one of, uh, in the post session, one of the audience asked me a question. Why not I, I model like a social inference as a, a layer and item inference as another layer? Um, the, the answer for me may be like consider my advisor and me while we are uh, um, discussing like academic books, his inference to me may be large, but while we are discussing clothes, makeups, I will not trust my advisor as it's a boy. So, I mean, so here, uh, the social inference among different items may be different. So, it may be more uh, com complete to consider our model, model like this. But I, I will uh, admit, like, if um, considering in other ways, may be more simpler, yeah. OK, one question over there. Uh, <coughs> thanks for the interesting talk. Uh, so in the inference model, right, you, you have this uh, joint inference edge, right? right. Which says uh, how the 
two users can influence uh, one user, for example, right? So is there any similar uh, uh, edge outgoing, right? From the item and the, so right now I think it's, you only consider this uh, mm. input edge, right, which can join the inference. I guess uh, yeah. um, the hyper edge has multiple source nodes, but only have one destination node. And right. you are asking why why they cannot be like more than one yes. destination yeah. node. Right. Um, actually, we can like uh, model this kind model a hyper edge with multiple source node and multiple destination node with a. Uh, with multiple hyper edge, as mentioned in our approach, if they are the, with the same probability. But if they are different, we need to d display in different hyper edge. Yeah, but even with the same probability, right, they become right. independent, right? Isn't it? Right. right, that's another question. Right, okay, thanks. Yeah, time for one last question. Hi, thank you for your talk. Uh, my question is, do you make any difference between social influence and simple homophily? Uh, what I mean is, if someone buys an item and then one in his network buys the same item, does that mean that the second guy is influenced by the first one? Or does it happen that they are just having the same kind of preferences and that's why they are friends, actually, and they have this link? I know. When we, when we are learning such kind of inference, we, we usually have some assumptions. For example, uh, if uh, like my advisor bought a book first, then my, and I bought a book first, at the, at, at the second, um, we usually assume that my advisor might have some inference to me, even though I may not be like I may not be influenced by him. But uh, it will be hard to consider this kind of case because the lack of real data. Because we when we are buying something, we did we usually does not specify what who who influenced me to buy this product in the in the like Amazon or Facebook. So without the real, so, uh, real data, we cannot learn this. But I would think if there is some data, your, your um, consideration is really in, uh, necessary to learn accurate social inference. Okay, let's thank our speaker again. Thank you.